This week, folks, we have a great summertime dish for you. Mm, so easy to fix. Just a sandwich. No, it's much more than a sandwich. It's a poor boy sandwich. Crispy fried shrimp and a coleslaw with a remoulade that'll give you a little bite and a little sweetness. Folks, you don't want to miss this because I'm loading the boat and I am fixing to go to New Orleans. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp on a glorious day it is. And who, what are we talking about? Poor boy sandwich. You know, down there south of New Orleans, there were so many people out of work at the time. And this old fella got to thinking that somebody need to feed them poor boys. We need to feed them something that's going to stick with them. What's it going to be? Hey, we're going to make these sandwiches. And what do we got down here? And we got a lot of them? Shrimp. Poor boy shrimp sandwich. And folks, they have become so popular around. Mm, I wish I lived in New Orleans every day just so I could have one. But you ain't got to take that trip because we're going to show you a very easy recipe. Now, when you make this poor boy sandwich, you got to start out with a good remoulade. Now, I know some of you Cajuns down there and some of you folks say, Cowboy Kent, you ain't even saying that right. I don't even really know the correct spelling. I think it's R-E-M-O-U-L-A-D-E, -E, remoulade, sort of like Kool-Aid. But folks, it is sort of a spicy Cajun sauce that goes on this sandwich, but also, folks, we're going to change it up, put it in a coleslaw. So, you know, folks, a while back, some of y'all might have seen it. The good folks at Ariot helped us, and we give away a gift card. I mean, there was so big of an outpouring of people that was just saying, you know, this is such a great thing. This is a nice thing. I'd like to win this. So I got to visiting with Wesley and them out there at Ariot, and they said, well, hey, let's do it again, Ken. I'm so glad the people enjoyed it. The people liked it. So we are going to have it again. There's going to be a little link down there below. And guess what? You might could win a brand new pair of boots. I mean, I got some on today, right here. I mean, they last a long time, folks. Check out the little link down there below. Get all duded up. Father's Day, 4th of July, it's time to have a party. Thank you, Ariot. Hey, y'all load up in the P-Row. We going down to the bayou, and the first thing we got to do is what? Put together this sauce on this coleslaw. Now, a lot of folks be using it, but they don't use coleslaw. They do. Maybe some cabbage, some lettuce, some purple onions, some radishes. But look here, folks. The cowboy's going the easy way out, and he really likes that stuff. But first, let's mix this sauce up because that coleslaw needs to set about an hour and a half to two hours to get everything blended well. So what do we got in there? Four little garlic cloves we have. Duke's mayo. You got to have some Duke's, folks. It is the best thing ever. So we're going to try to get in here and get us about a cup full. I can see some of you out there guessing, saying, no, that was cup and one-eighth. Really, it wasn't. It was three-sixteenths. Look here. What's going to make a good spicy remoulade sauce? Some of that green chili chipotle relish. If you ain't got it, folks, it was in the video with the tacos. It was in the video with the pizza. You've got to have this stuff. It'll make everything in your house taste better. Even put it on ice cream. Best thing in the world. Shannon will have you a little link down there where you can find it. So we need about a cup full of that as well. And yeah, right there, I'm going to call that pretty close. So you know if you're making a couple batches of this, you need to order a case, you'll run out. So let's go ahead and mix that up just a little. And then we'll add the rest of it to it. But look at that good color it's going to have. Mm -mm, and I can already smell them flavors coming out. So I want you to mix that up really well. And then I want you to take you some of this lemon. And roll that lemon around there on the ground first or the table or the floor, top of your head somewhere. Makes it easier to get that juice out of. And just let her run in there. I like to use a half of a lemon and squeeze it. Remember, we've been working out with Richard Simmons. Squeeze that lemon. Get into it. Feel it in your core. You got to make it go. Now, to that, we need a little bit of this red wine vinegar. Okay? So just go ahead and put it in there because we got to have some more of that acid to break down that coleslaw and that mayonnaise to get everything blended well. So we got that like it wanted and we put the acid in there, but we got to have just a little taste because we're going to add. A little bit of sweetness back to this. Mm. I go rowing down to P-Row already. I mean, mm, just a little bit of sugar. And folks, this will work as some of the best coleslaw dressing you ever had in your life. So we got that there ready to go. 
So let me move him over here. Move this next contestant over here. See, can we get in this bag? Dump her all in. Look at that. that pretty cabbage, carrots, lettuce. So we got our little coleslaw, one bag in there, folks. And hey, I always make extra because I like to just eat this stuff like it is. That's why you got this extra sauce because as you let this set, what's going to happen? It's going to get creamier. It's going to get better. So we're just going to put about three-fourths of it in there right now, which is about that much. And I just want you to mix it up, and we're going to let her go to town, get us some more in there if we need it, because we can always make more. Well, we got her all mixed well, and you can see the consistency there. And remember, as this sets, everything's going to get a little wetter to it. So we're going to put this in an ice chest, let her set over in that Yeti, and then we're going to go back and we're going to get them shrimp ready, the main attraction. Well, we're getting pretty close. We are that coleslaw. Is it coleslaw or coleslaw, Shan? Which one is it? C-O-L-E. C-O-L-E. Coleslaw. It's been sitting in there about an hour, so let's go ahead and get this dry stuff mixed up that we're going to give that crispy coating to that shrimp. And it is just a cup of flour and some cornmeal. How much? That much just right the there. Right just the right amount. To that, we're going to add some smoked paprika. I have a hard time spelling that because I want to call it paprika, but it ain't, folks. Spell correct has got me too many times. Look here. Should be on every Cajun dish, American dish, Japanese dish, Russian dish, anything you want to cook dish, Red River Ranch seasoning. That's what it should be. And that thing is always giving me some trouble. So we're going to put about that much in there. Going to mix it up a little. But remember, if some of y'all might have seen it and then you might not have seen it, crispy catfish video we did. What makes that crust pop even more than that? Mm, I'm just here to tell you, folks, it is some baking powder. Not in the dry, no. Oh. Cornstarch. <laughs> Cornstarch goes in the dry. It's going to make things pop. But it also adheres that coating to meat just a little bit better. So get that all mixed back up in there really good. You can see over here, I got my little 10 inch oven heating up with some good fry oil. Get you something that's got a good smoke point to it above 350 degrees because we're going to give us a crispy fry. So, that is good to go, right? So, let's have some butter milk. What, you ain't got none? You went to the fridge and you didn't look? You didn't go to the store? I do that a lot, but I have to make it out of milk and lemon juice. Isn't that right, Shan? Shan showed me that trick so many years ago. So, we sort of cut this recipe down today, folks. I'm using about 12 to 14 shrimp. If you're gonna do more than that, you're gonna have to add a little, but guess what? A little bit of this here baking powder in this butter milk. We are creating a chemical experience. A but, chemical experience? Yes. But there's been many folks tell me, and the big had it down here a while ago, he still got it. Thank you for guarding the hot sauce. A lot of folks be using that old Louisiana stuff. Mm, Louisiana. But that crystal hot sauce, if you can find it, is really good too. I want you to give it some shake in there, however much you want. Let's go that much today. You want to? Mm, it is good. You can use your favorite hot sauce you can. Give it a good stirring. So let's talk about the shrimp we're going to use. Make sure they've been deveined, clean, fresh, in the cold, raw. Not cooked shrimp, I'm talking raw. I love to use them red shrimp, rock shrimp, something that's got some meat to it because I like a big bite when I take hold. Well, folks, you can see the windage problem is taking place here. I'm trying to get things just to stay put. It's sort of like saran wrap, know what I mean? But you can see that really did bubble up. That's what we're wanting. Give it a little weight, let everything get mixed up really well. Got them little shrimpers laying out there, oh so nice. Give them in here and give them a little bath. Put them over here, give them a shake. Shake the excess off, back in the bath, back over here. And look what you got, a well-coated shrimpy. Maybe he'll hold the fork down. So let me get all these done, and I'm going to tell you, I can't do it out here, but you can at home if you're doing this in the house. When you get all these battered, put them in an ice box about 30 minutes before you fry them. Mm. It'll help that coating stick to it even better. Well, we have got our fry oil up to about 350, and folks, we just going to drop them in there. See if you let them set a minute how good that coating stays on there. And we're going to fry a few at a time. You'll have to roll them around just a little. 
We want them to get good and crispy. Whew, that is what we after. And I'm using 12 for two sandwiches, but there's 14 out here if you're counting with me. Guess what them other two's for? Samples. You don't want them to stick together, so make sure when you put them in there, everybody is not touching. So Andy, play us a little Zydeco, some of that good Cajun music, brother, while we're sitting here frying these shrimp. Well, you see me grab them hoagie buns or like a little deli bun sandwich. I've seen this on French bread. Now, use whatever you got, but I like these because they're going to be a real size bite here in a minute. They are. I like to take some of that sauce that was left over from that coleslaw. Smear it down both sides. Lay you a little slaw in there because when them shrimp rest in there, they want something soft. Put them in there as you can arrange them. The more you can get in there, the merrier. It's usually like four to five in there, but if they're very big, Hey, you may have to cut them in half and just slip them in there. Then I want you to put some more of that coleslaw all over it, mound it up, whatever you got to do, and then just drizzle that sauce right back there on top. <clears throat> Folks, it is fine dining, but my workers have been working. One of them has anyway. Hey, Big, you like some shrimp? Ain't you got a little Louisiana blood in you? And speaking of we're going to feed somebody, look who showed up. Wait, sit down right there and you wait for it. You, are you waiting? Good boy. Duker, have you done anything today, buddy? Look at you there. Woo-wee, Dookie said it's crunchy. I'm gonna have to go. It's hard on my dentures. Well, folks, you can see that's sort of a done deal, but I learned from a feller one time, just take that and so you can keep it in there. Give it a mash with that knife because it's gonna take a big set of dentures to get around this thing, it is. I don't know if y'all know it, but in the water, them little shrimps, also related to maybe them crawdads, they do the backup dance when they gotta go somewhere. And they put that tail out, fan it on back, fan it on back there. But this time, when you come back up to get a bite, you swim fast with that breath stroke, and you have another bite. Mm. Folks, as you can see, there is so much flavor in this thing that it runs all over everything you got. Get you one of them big old black trash bags for a bib and just put it around your neck and sit down in a chair because you fit to enjoy this and it's going to make a mess, but it is fine dining. That remoulade sauce that we done made with that relish, mm, and you can feel it in there. But folks, the crispy crunch of that shrimp, mm, it is so good. You just get a sort of a party in your mouth every time you take a bite. It is some of that good. Whew, folks, so much flavor and so easy to make. Great summertime dish it is. Bring in the folks, get you some of them shrimp, but also let me mention, that can be used with some good white catfish too. Maybe some clams and oysters, put all three or four of them in there. You've got a smorgasbord, get you a piece of bread that long, invite 12 neighbors, and just let them have a sniff and tell them thank you for coming. So as always, folks, I tip my hat to all our service men and women, all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying above camp and keeping us safe. God bless you each and every one. We're so honored you join us every week here in camp, whether it be in the backyard or out here on this old ranch, we are just so glad to have you. We never take it for granted. Whether you're living in New York City or you're living in some little apartment, or maybe you're out somewhere camping in an RV or a tent, pulling it up on the phone. I don't care what race you are. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what your speech is. You're all welcome to pull up a chair at our table. Me and Shannon consider you family. We do. And that's what it's all about, folks. So join hands, reach across the world, and let's just be good neighbors. And thank God for everything we got. We appreciate you each and every one for watching. And I'll see you down the I Ain't Poor Boy No More sandwich. Woo, it's going to be good. You know, down there in South New Orleans, whew, that's a hard word. Well, we're getting pretty close. That close off, close off. 
Hear him out there? That's Jeremiah singing that song. I want a pole boy. One fell out. Mm, 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 mm.